Hey guys, I'm testing out my new camera. I have this new gimbal -y camera that tracks my face. I got it just in time for the Pomona show next week so that I can record some stuff uh, at the show and with AJ and um, I think it'll be pretty cool to utilize this. So it follows my face I'm in my office right now in the dark and I think it's looking pretty okay. I know we've all been pretty busy during the holidays, Christmas, New Year's, the in-between week, people are on break and being with their family and so it's been awesome to be able to spend time with my family, to spend more time with my wife while she's on break and the kids while they're on break. Just got back from Tahoe, it's usually snowy up there where we go snowboarding but it's still warm in California and so there wasn't really any snow, kind of sad but kids still had fun, played arcades, ate good food. I started doing some pairings last week, this week, earlier this week. I started putting some animals together. I did maybe did maybe like six or seven pairings so far. Some from my tiger project, some from my high white, high coverage project. I'm trying to pair more intentionally this year, meaning I have a lot more selection, a lot more females to work with. My males already feel like are pretty good. Um, I have some pretty stud males and I just need some females to pair them with and so I think it'll be pretty good. I think the toughest part for me is that it's going to be difficult not to pair more than I can. I said in my previous vlogs that I probably have only space for 20 to 25 pairings maybe and that's assuming I'm going to be able to move some animals, sell some animals at shows, online, etc. So I'm counting on that. <laughs> Um, otherwise, I will be pretty packed and I'll have to find different solutions for storing more of these hatchlings. Worst case scenario, I can just stack lidded bins um, along the sides and walls if I need to. But I would prefer to just keep them in the actual racks. But I think I can do it. I, I'm hopeful for this year as I have some stuff available now, as I'm going to have more stuff available this coming season. And um, finding the right channels to sell is going to be pretty important. A lot of people will sell on their IG DMs, uh, IG stories, and people DM them. Uh, people will sell on Morph Market, but those are kind of hit or miss, right? If your reach isn't very big, it can be hard. Sometimes even if your reach is bigger and people don't have a need for your particular projects and animals then that can also be harder so we've been seeing a lot of wholesale packs we've been seeing a lot of uh, prices being lowered and you know these are all normal things and so there is nothing to worry about but I've been thinking a lot about how to market how to sell how to be creative with uh, sales and reaching people and different ways to draw people to my website, my page, things like that. Um, a lot of it is, I think, uh, certain animals are harder to sell than others. We always have the trends. Right now, the trend seems to be, you know, tigers, um, even cappuccinos, frappuccinos are prices are lowering and people are still into that. Um, Exantic prices are pretty low right now, so you can get into that project fairly easily if you wanted to. Um, hets for sure, Het Exantics, even 100% Hets are are pretty cheap um, right now, relatively cheap. Yeah, I think it's an it's a good time and an interesting time to buy animals for sure, but the selling part in a more or less saturated market is kind of what we're all going to try to figure out moving forward. So I have a few ideas for myself that I'll, I'll try to employ and make my website a place where people will be able to come and see what's up and um, hopefully there's more foot traffic and more of a funnel towards my website as I offer animals. The tough part about being a small breeder is that I don't have as much variety as some of these bigger breeders, right? And maybe this is, as a new breeder, this is kind of 
all of our problems is that the variety that we have, like let's say you niche down into a project that's very niche and um, if it's popular, you'll do well. You'll sell out all the babies. If it's not, you're stuck with a lot of stuff that won't move. If you have more variety in your projects, but you're still a small breeder with only 20 or less breeders, pairings, then I think that makes it a little bit difficult too because you're doing projects that maybe you're spread so thin that you're not able to do one project super well. But you'll have variety to offer, right? So you can have a set of empty bags, some super dowels, some charcoals, some phantoms, um, maybe some high white stuff and it's just a mishmash of stuff and I think that's fine but from my perspective as a new breeder I feel like that's hard to really develop top end stuff even for me my niche is kind of the high coverage as white as possible on the white patterning um, extreme Harleys that's my um, base project that I'm going to really hone in and refine moving forward and even with this amazing stock that I have, I feel like it's still going to take me some time to refine and produce the top stuff, the best stuff. And that's with me having so many females to pair. I can't imagine spreading myself so thin that I won't be able to refine the projects as quickly as possible. I'll show you guys some of the pairings I have going on soon. Uh, I guess I'll split up this vlog a little bit where I'm recording just to test out this camera right now. It's a little bit late, but I wanted to play with it a little bit. And this other camera that I have is pretty good. It it focuses very, very good. So this is my podcast camera. I have a hard time focusing on the product because it's trying to focus on my face. But but this camera right here, this is the Sony ZV-1. This one, if I put anything like a product or an animal or an object right up front, it immediately auto focuses on it super quick. So this, that's what I like about this camera. For this DJI camera that I'm using right now, I'm trying to figure out the pros and cons of this one. This might not be a good one to show product on, but it's a really good vlogging camera though. I'll bring this to the show. I'll probably record some content while driving down. So for Pomona, I'm leaving early Friday morning, probably 5 a.m. I'm in Northern California. It's gonna take me about six hours to drive down to SoCal, Southern California, where I'll pick up AJ at LAX. And then uh, um, I'll try to pick him up before noon time. We'll grab his animals. I'll have my animals in the car, and then we'll head out towards uh, Pomona. Pomona, I think, is about an hour and a half um, east of Anaheim. So it's kind of in the general vicinity of LA. Uh, at Pomona, I'm going to try to bring as many animals as possible. I have a full table to myself. It's an eight foot table. I got my tablecloths, my banner, my um, stickers, um, business cards. I'm gonna put, oh, it tracked. I'm gonna put some Zero's t-shirts out. I'll put some Gecko Pod hoodies and t-shirts out as well. I got my stickers here. Gecko Pod stickers. Zero stickers. So I'll have some merch out, shirts and hoodies out on the table. I'm not sure how many geckos I have to bring, but, but I'll bring some. I'll bring a handful of, of adults, probably uh, ones that I won't be using or have no plans for, and then I'll have a bunch of sub adults and a bunch of grow outs. So I'll have to figure out. I have to mark out basically what I'm gonna bring maybe tomorrow or um, this weekend sometime. This camera's a little bit weird, right? Like, I guess if it's stationary like this, and I just move my head a little bit, then it kind of tracks a little bit. Uh, it's good for some situations, but maybe not where I'm just sitting still on a chair. But this will be awesome for, I think, for the show when I walk around and show animals. 
think this will be pretty cool. I'll probably release this vlog in a couple days. New Year's is on Monday, on the 1st, which is pretty crazy, 2024. Uh, maybe I'll stitch this all together and put it out on maybe Monday or Tuesday. Um, I think that'll be kind of cool. This will be my second show, only my second show that I'm vending my own animals. Uh, my third show total that I've vended, helped vended. I, I've been, but I've been to a lot of shows. I've attended a lot of shows in the last couple of years um, just to feel it out and gauge how things are. In California, there's not a lot of crested geckos at the shows. Um, I've been to Tinley. Tinley has a lot of crested geckos and a lot of pretty cool um, off species that is not super popular. So I loved um, looking, seeing all that stuff at Tinley. For the California shows, uh, they're a bit smaller. The Sacramento one, I enjoy going to. It's pretty big. The venue's pretty big. And there are a decent amount of animals. But not a, again, not a ton of crested geckos. You know, I like doing the shows. It's great to chat with people and, you know, talk animals with people. Uh, that stuff is always pretty exciting for me. But I also see how it can be pretty draining to do uh, multi-day shows for maybe not even that much if you're if you're not able to sell too many. So I know it's been hard the last few shows for uh, Crested Gecko people. The sales haven't been great for everybody. You know, some people do okay, but I think the majority of people it's slower for them. And so I think that's one thing that I do worry about a little bit. And I, it's not that I worry that there will be no sales at shows, but I'm just worried that the time being put in at the shows, you know, is it is it worth the effort? Or can I just focus more of that time online to kind of build things out, to develop um, relationships there, to develop better ways to funnel to my website and sell animals there? I'm not sure yet, you know, I'm still kind of going through it, trying to figure things out. I'm just starting my third season, and so I'm just, uh, I've been selling things already. Selling things locally, selling things through um, private DMs, um, a couple things on Morph Market, and so it is a slow trickle, I'm, just, I'm moving things. I'm moving animals, but I want to be able to do that consistently. And, you know, it doesn't have to make a ton of money. I do want to be consistent with moving animals so that I can produce more animals so that um, I can continue to work on these projects and further these projects and also just be able to provide people with good animals. So I, like most people, I think my animals are pretty good quality. <laughs> um, of course, there are varying degrees of how good good a, an animal is in terms of its value of being a stud breeder or not to be able to provide that for people at a relatively affordable price i think that would that's kind of what i want to do and hope to continue to do i might be eating my words you know as we look back to this video in the future but i don't imagine charging in an arm and leg for some of these animals you know i want to be able to provide quality animals at prices that are pretty reasonable um, and of course reasonable is all relative okay so let me cut this for a bit and see how this has recorded I kind of have a slow SD card so I ordered a SD card micro SD card from Amazon is coming in the morning but I just wanted to record a little bit and test out the quality see how it is and I'll splice all these videos together Switching over, I started recording a little bit last night playing with this camera, and now I'm playing with this camera still, but I have this mic. So see how the mic does. It's kind of looks kind of dumb though. It's kind of like in the way, but I guess I guess it's good if you're walking around. You don't really need it if you're just sitting here. I can just you know set up a microphone and you know I can use this microphone. So this is lighting that's kind of in the afternoon. Windows are closed. Got my microphone here. Thanks for bearing with me as I go through the vlog like this. I want to have the best video and audio 
at a level that's not completely absurd where I have to set every single thing up, but I want it to be as simple as possible and still be pretty good quality. So I think this camera can record in 4K, but I think I'm just setting it up so it's 1080p, 30 frames per second. So it's not the best quality, but I mean, it's doable for what we're doing. I'm just chatting here with you guys. Maybe when we're showing animals, if I show you guys some animals, you guys need more detail. And then if I show animals, I can toggle to my light box right here, which I don't have yet, or I didn't set up yet. And then I can use this. This thing has, like I said yesterday, this thing has incredible autofocus auto uh, where you can just put the animal up right, right up front and it just automatically focuses right away. And so maybe I'll put set this up like right over here, pointing at the light box. And then, you know, I can chat a little bit, talk about, my projects we're talking about animals traits and structure and whatnot and then to give an example a real-time live example i'll toggle the switch and it'll switch pan over to my sony zb1 so anyway i thought it'd be cool to show you guys how you know i'm kind of going through the process of setting different things up and working on different things here and there so for me i know it's the long game and so i'm not i don't need to have everything right away i'm building it slowly so I picked up a few different things here and there. Uh, picked up this, I had originally had a Sony A5100 to take pictures, to take video on. That was my first episode with AJ um, on the Gecko Pod. It was my Sony A5100 through a cam link, setting that stuff up. And it was just decent quality. It wasn't the best, but the settings on the back end wasn't dialed in all the way. And so it's a little bit grainy and fuzzy. So um, I don't know if I'll ever shoot and record and upload in 4k for our purposes but maybe i'll try that maybe i'll try the pomona show i'll record on here this is a dgi in 4k and then i'll upload in 4k see how that looks and see how much work it takes to upload and edit and whatnot but for now i feel like 1080p is a pretty good medium for high definition and it's not you know file size is maybe around eight gigabytes for 45 minutes to an hour's worth of recording. And um, yeah, it takes maybe like three hours to upload. And so, but 4K would take forever to upload. That's the bad thing about it. And so, but you get crispy video. I'm creating content, but at the same time, this stuff doesn't, I'm not getting paid for it. This is just stuff I like to do and enjoy. I don't want to make it too difficult. But so right now I have this connected to my computer, this camera connected to my computer and running through some software. And so now I can pull up stuff like this. So I can pull this stuff up and you know chat about it, kind of like I what I how I do it on the Gecko Pod. So I just posted this animal up today. So I have a backlog of pictures I took on multiple days um, for breeder picks. And it's definitely a chore. I didn't I don't like taking pictures of breeders because you know you have to pose them, you have to fire them up. And my back hurts as I'm kind of holding the camera, making sure these guys aren't running off and doing crazy stuff. And um, and so I got a handful of breeder pictures. I have more that I'll post. I schedule my post and post it up. But even for, you know, even though I'm using this camera now, so, so let me show you guys. So I'm using this camera, right? So AJ suggested I get this camera, Sony A5100. And I have some friends that are photographers too and you know they recommended a few different things and this is a pretty standard go-to so this is a tamarin lens on a sony a5100 body so i bought these separately uh off of marketplace facebook marketplace i bought them in pieces to try to get the best deal and uh, i got got this combo and it's been working well it allows me to take pictures like this you know um and obviously when you take pictures and you upload it to instagram it definitely decompresses it i mean you know like it's it's uh they look good but it's if you zoom in on it it's grainy that's not how the original files are original files are actually really crispy and they look really good but ig does its thing and so that's fine you guys get an idea of animals you know people can see and get an idea of all these different animals that i have breeding this year the tough part about uh all of these pictures is that even though 
the setting, I dial it in uh, very similarly. So I'll dial in the settings, whether it's the aperture, um, the shutter speed, the ISO, I'll dial it in very similarly. You know, I try to keep it a consistent distance and whatnot and zooming in, uh, it's still hard to capture it fully. You know, I have to go in and do some post editing and you could batch edit, but at the same time, it not every single picture is gonna come out exactly the same. Um, and so the difficulty about photography that I found is that even if I go outside on a cloudy day, um, if there's a little bit more, you know, sun peeking through a little bit down on the other side of the city, it can still change a little bit of the, the look of it, right? And so you could kind of tell here, right? So this one, this one, you can look at the grass. It was a darker day that day, but a crispy picture, able to contrast off with a white paper towel. And then here, it's like a brighter day, right? You can kind of see on the glare, you know, around the edges here that it started, the sun started to peek out after a while and, and then it kind of washes out a little bit. And so even though it's in the shade, this picture is in the shade, it was still, it still blew it out a little bit. And so in post, I try to fix that, but obviously I'm just looking at the picture side by side, trying to match them up to, you know, this first, first couple pictures I took and, you know, it's not always successful, but so you see, you could kind of see the differences of the paper towels and some are some look a little bit brighter than the other some look a little more contrasty some look a little bit more hazy like this one looks a little more hazy that's the difficulty with pictures that i found even on the camera so you know a lot of more i took a poll a few months back um i don't know if it's in the broadcast channel poll but i took a poll maybe on ig story asking you know what people shoot on uh, camera photos do you shoot on your iPhone? Do you shoot on, you know, your your fancy cameras? Um, what are some things you shoot on? And most people, huge majority, shoot on the camera phone. Uh, it's just convenient, right? I've been shooting on camera phone up until I started these breeder pictures. It's totally fine, but you know, there's always that debate of like, what is unedited? What is untouched? And we realize, and I realize that everything everything already has a preset setting um whether it's your phone whether it's your camera if you set things on auto you can already see kind of on the screen of the of this camera that it's auto adjusting for uh, exposure for shutter speed the iso it's already auto calibrating right and this is why you do it in manual so you can not let it auto calibrate you calibrate yourself but essentially you're doing the same thing as you're kind of looking through the lens looking at kind of all the lighting you're trying to ex uh, dial it in so that the animal looks as accurate as possible. Um, but, you know, it's still a setting, right? So you can save that setting. You can take pictures with that setting going on. But the variables of the lighting of the sky, of the clouds, of whatever's reflecting still messes with it. And so, um, so yeah, I think, I think photographers, you know, legit photographers have a hard task. Um, I'm sure they're used to it when they do weddings and whatnot. But for animals, it's a little bit more touchy because animals, you want as accurate of color as possible when it comes to what you see visually. So for me, let me tweak it in a way where it's as accurate to what I'm seeing in person. For this animal, owl, right? This owl animal, it's creamier. It's not as white. And so I wanted to capture and make sure I don't um, overexpose, over brighten um whatever it is to make it look whiter than it is and so i try to capture it as po uh, as clean as possible this one is panda king and he's actually pretty white uh, so this is pr a pretty i feel like this is a pretty accurate picture of what i see in real life when he's fired up right he's very contrasty very dark and white at the same time a little bit of yellow around his side you know little speckles but overall he's a pretty white animal and then we have um, Hyperion here. This is a frost line animal. And um, he's pretty white as well when he fires up. When he fires up, you see that contrast. Um, I wanted to match as close to what I see in person as possible. And so the paper towel for me is a good reference, although it's possible to blow out your paper towel and kind of to whiten or lighten your paper towel 
and then select your animal and whiten and lighten that. And so there are ways to kind of like trick people, but obviously I'm assuming that most people don't want to trick their customers. Although we do know that some people do that, right? Maybe they don't call it tricking, but they definitely, definitely shoot in a way that um, even the animals they're selling. Uh, at this point, I've taken enough pictures of animals and looked at enough examples of animals to know for sure when people are overexposing and blowing out their animals, I'm like, that animal does not look like that, right? So there are a lot of, a decent amount of culprits, um, even big names. Uh, a lot of people will buy these animals. Do you have a thing like that? Huh? Oh, I haven't had Cornelius in a while. This is Cornelius the corn snake. Ah, doesn't zoom in as, doesn't focus as easy as the other camera. See, my, um, my other Sony focuses better. This one doesn't focus as quickly. When my daughter came in with her snake, Cornelius, I'm holding her while she's getting something. I was talking about how some people overexpose their photos. They try to sell animals that are whiter than they really are. And I think that's pretty shady. Yeah, I mean, some of you guys, if you watch the Gecko Pod, you know my feelings about animals that are, you know, um, sold as, you know, high, not just high coverage, but high white in color. Not just high white meaning used to just mean the high coverage but actually white. So like, oh, is this white? They're like, yeah, it's white. I'm like, no, it's not white. <laughs> so just be careful. If you're newer, you're looking for animals that are actually white. It's actually very much harder to get white, um, white, white on some of these high coverage animals. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's definitely not as common as you might think. Even for my stuff, I feel like it's fairly, you know, if I had to rate it, it would be maybe like an eight out of 10, some of these animals, eight and a half, maybe even um, some close to nine. But even then, most of the stuff is, I would consider creamy. So I'm hesitant to call things white, white, um, pear white, whatever you want to call it. Some people say, oh, this is like paper white. Yeah, most things are not paper white. So let's just try to be as accurate as possible. I think the term terminology is important because especially for new breeders, New breeders think when you say paper white, they're going to think, oh, it's paper white. You know, they're going to take that literally. They're not going to think it's just the terminology that we've been using for a long time, you know. Um, so I think we, at least for me, I personally want to start describing animals um, a little bit more accurately uh, just because for new breeders, they don't get confused. And they don't, you know, if we're going to spend hundreds on an animal. We definitely better get it get our descriptions accurate. So this is Toshi. Toshi, I didn't, I only paired him to a Lily White this first, his first season. And I didn't pair him to other things. He has some really good coverage um, and some cool patterning, uh, but he's creamier than, he's creamier than I'd like. He's not bad though. Um, so I might pair him, I might pair him again. I'll just throw him to a, a female couple of females maybe and see how things turn out but the babies that he has uh for one of the lily whites is pretty good okay i'm back <laughs> that was my daughter she's actually the first one that got me into reptiles with her snake she got that a few years ago she wished for one and then she was making these she was re actually recording and uh she was in this room but you know it's a little bit set up differently I had books back here instead of cages but um she made this video, this cute video about Cornelius, the corn snake, and the pros and cons of keeping a um, corn snake. So she did one of those, uh, why should I buy a corn snake video? And so I thought that was really cute. And so that was when she was 10. She had, when she was 10, she had that snake for a little bit. And now she's 14. And uh, she's gotten a little bit busier. And isn't as into reptiles, although she still likes them, but um, she knew all about crestids before I did. She knew about all these different animals and reptiles before I did. And so um, she is my inspiration and she's the one that got me into um, breeding and 
helped me to dive deep into the world of geckos and uh, the reptile hobby. And so she's the best. But briefly back to pictures. Pictures are important. Pictures and accuracy is important. Um, I do notice that a lot of people will kind of bump their contrast and I'm not against that, but I think you can overdo it. And so I'm not going to pull up example, <laughs> examples because I'm not going to shame anybody. Um, but even, you know, people I'm, I know and I'm good friends with and I'm close to, uh, for this one I just posted today, this one is actually this contrasty. When it fires up, it looks really cool. Uh, this one I got from Crypt Cryptiles from um, Kyle. And this one is a pos possible het exantic. This one is um, was paired from two 100% hets, and so is sold as a 66% het. And 66% obviously it's it's either het or it's not, but it's just the the number 66 just tells me that the parents were both 100% hets that it paired to. Uh, but yeah, we just call these pos hets just because it either is or it isn't, and so I'll prove it out this year hopefully i have a hundred percent head female that i'll i'll probably throw it to this one is astro i had astro for since last year i grew it out as a baby and uh this one is actually a decent white but it also is cream mixed in it um a more yellow yellowy um coloration that is mixed into it so it's not like a fully like if you look at it, it's not like a fully full-on white animal. But this one's pretty cool. Really nice coverage. This girl is, I paired her to Hyperion this past season. Hyperion is my frost frost guy. This one. This one was paired to this girl. And this girl is from, I think it's originally from Oklahoma, from Noah. I think he paired a couple. I think the parents of this one is from actually from Crep Creptal uh, Christy. I forgot her her breeder page. She's not super active on online, but I see her at the shows once in a while, whenever I'm at the shows. I saw her a couple of times, basically Tinley and Flora Fauna. I saw Christy, I think it's Creptal Room or something. I think that's her name. But anyway, uh, the parents were originally from her. And I think Noah had this one. Uh, actually, I don't know the full origin, but this one's from Oklahoma. Um, second hand from from Oklahoma to somebody else and then I bought from somebody else. I think it was Bailey. But she's she has nice coverage. A little bit drippy right here, but not full on drips. But she's uh she's cool. She's right over where she she's right over here actually. She's in this one. Okay, how's this microphone doing? Does it sound okay? There's actually two fans going right next to me. I don't know if it's picking up on the fan noise, but I'll see. I guess I'll see in post. After my last vlog, I put up a poll and asked, what is the ideal time for a vlog that you would listen to? And so going back to, oh, it's actually pretty clear. Can you see it? Focus, focus uh, right here, broadcast channel. So broadcast channel, on my page. And what's your ideal length? What's your ideal length? to listen to a vlog and most people 100 100 votes 103 votes says doesn't matter doesn't matter as long as it's helpful info 48 said 10 to 30 minutes i'm way past 30 minutes <laughs> so i'm gonna try to cut it down and cut out all the extraneous stuff that's not needed and so i'll try to cut it down so yeah most people say it doesn't matter as long as the info is helpful actually i don't know if this info is helpful i'm just rambling and chatting and uh I'm hoping that I'll cut out some bits that aren't helpful and other parts I'll I'll keep in to kind of streamline it and um, edit it down. But okay, there's, I mean, there's so much more to talk about that I could just keep rambling on about, but for the sake of not boring you guys too much, a couple more things I wanted to show you guys. It's New Year, so Happy New Year. I'm excited for this new 2024 for myself and for the hobby, for you guys. I know some people are exiting and leaving just through due to personal reasons or busy, whatever it is. And so we'll miss people on the way out, but but hopefully more people come in and join us in the hobby. Um, and we'll have a lot more new people and better breeders. And I, I'm so determined 
to help a lot of new breeders develop to be amazing breeders, amazing people in the hobby that really help contribute the community. There are a lot of good bits and parts about this community and hobby already, and I love it. I love all of it, but hopefully we can make it even better. And so a few things I wanted to show you guys. So your YouTube page is I'm trying to utilize all the features of YouTube. So the YouTube page have about 152 subscribers. Not that it matters to me very much. Numbers, again, don't matter very much to me. Um, they matter, but they don't, if that makes sense, right? Like you want to reach people, but you also don't want to like, you know, freak out over the numbers. Um, but, you know, decent views on each of the vlogs. I got four vlogs so far and uh, some with crappy audio and video, which I'm trying to fix, as you can see, hopefully for this um, for this vlog number five, it's much better. Um, yeah, so what I was trying to say is that I was trying to utilize all the features for Instagram. This is kind of what I did. So if you look on my Instagram, I moved it to, before I had, a, had it as a personal page, but now I moved it to a business page a few months ago. And so now I can see more metrics and analytics. Um, before I got up to like 100K accounts reached in the last 30 days, it's all a numbers game, right? You can reach 10,000 right, right here, right? I can reach 10,000 accounts and get no likes, get no views or followers, right? So, um, but you know, the higher it is, obviously you might get a follower or two, but I don't really count on this. The reach is important, but I find that um, it's so saturated that it doesn't matter as much, you know? And so I don't get, don't get caught up on these numbers. 4,000, uh, 4,500 followers, don't get, don't, don't get caught up in these numbers. But um, what I'm doing here is I'm utilizing the functionalities that Instagram provides. So, you know, if we have posts, we have reels, um, and, you know, use these highlights right here. I know, I know a lot of you guys already do this, but, you know, for new breeders that are newer to how to set things up, um, this is what I've been doing. And I do it slowly, right? I didn't do it right away. I build it out first to make sure I have the content. So if I had all crappy animals, obviously I wouldn't be doing this as much. You know, I wouldn't be posting up as much. I would kind of slowly build out, understand my animals first and then post up. So I feel like two years in, I feel like I have a decent grasp of the animals a little bit better. So now I can, uh, got a camera, right? Um, two years in, I got a camera recently. And so it's like a slow build up, a slow upgrade on stuff. And um, now I can take pictures of these breeders that I grew from. Most of these I grew from baby. Some of them I grew as some, uh, I bought as sub adults. But a lot of these I grew as babies, three grams, uh, four grams, um, five grams. And now they're ready to breed. I'm pretty excited about that. And so now I can showcase them, you know. What else was I saying? Oh, so when I pull it up like this, you can't see the broadcast channel. But the broadcast channel is something I started doing recently i noticed that not a lot of people utilized it in a way that's helpful or useful you know a lot of people do it for sales and i don't want to just be about selling you guys i want to be um, more helpful in my content and so you can see it on my my phone rather than the desktop i guess but so broadcast channel right there like you guys have been seeing i'm a big proponent of it i think it can be done well i'm still trying to figure out how best to utilize it but I want things to be helpful so that, and not spammy. Oh, spammy is, spammy being, you know, spamming people is another killer. Uh, that drives me crazy. So I personally don't like the spammy giveaways. I mean, a lot of people do it. And again, that's fine. Like I'll, I'll just, uh, I just like swipe and, and move on. But um, I think it's tough when people will be like, okay, tag and share to your stories and follow um these 20 accounts you know i'm exaggerating obviously follow 20 accounts and spam to your story in my feed i just when people do that that's all i see and i'm like ah i don't know i feel like i get pretty disillusioned when you know there's like a giveaway like that you know like legit i feel like i just want to i will just give animals away without make making people jump through all the hoops right so for our gecko pod giveaway we didn't have people spam their stories. Maybe the first time we did with Treehouse, with Janine, when she was giving her a cap. And so we did it with her. But then the second time, I think which episode it was, but I gave away an animal. Um, Chad did, AJ did, Brian did. And we're just like, oh, 
comment in the YouTube comments and IG comment on IG, but you don't have to share the story. You don't have to reshare. And I felt like that was a better way for me personally to see it done because it didn't spam everybody's feed. And so I'm trying to stay away from spamminess. I think it, I want to present myself in a way that is just more clean cut. You know, people will hear word of mouth. People will see the funnel through the gecko pod, through these vlogs, and they'll see animals. And if they want them, they'll reach out to me. If they don't, that's fine. You know, and for me, I'm not saying you need to take that advice. I'm just trying to share how I do it. Uh, I also don't need to sell animals immediately, right? So for me, I'm trying to build out the base. I'm taking, I'm taking two, three years, even four years to build out a legitimate, a legitimate customer base where I'll sell things, but I'm not going to blast it out completely. You know, um, I'm still trying to build the base, build out, build out the community, um, provide a lot of content, provide a lot of helpful information and things to people and just make those relationships and connections for sure it takes a long time and i'm spending a lot of time doing those things so this vlog content is a part of that puzzle and i want more people to understand and know that i'm here to help so this morning a local guy um, a few cities over drove down over to my house and bought one of my breeders you know it was good it's just good making that connection and talking and talking geckos and appreciating each other and being encouraged by each other in the hobby and you know afterwards he messaged me and thanked me and i did the same and i said if you ever need anything else let me know i'll hook you up you know i want to build those connections where we help each other out we're not trying to nickel and dime each other and pull and extract as much money um, from people as possible like don't get me wrong i want to sell animals i want to make i want to make um, a decent amount of um, income eventually but i also i'm not just trying to squeeze people for the money i want to provide a service i want to provide animals in a way that is actually valuable to the next person the next breeder and so that they can buy these animals and not worry um, that they're going to get scammed or whatnot you know that they know that i'll take care of them um, if needed and so the vlogs are one way to kind of build out this presence and to kind of show my animals um, and so people can hopefully one day be excited about them and buy them. And um, I think it'd be great. I want to create amazing things so that people can buy amazing things for the projects and do amazing things with them. So anyway, long winded. Let me go back to. OK, sorry, I'm a little bit scattered today, but going back to my YouTube page. Uh, but now coming back to my YouTube page, I want it to be really clean cut, you know, just nice and clean, nothing crazy or flashy. And I wanted to utilize the features of, you know, shorts I haven't done yet, right? Basically, it's like the IG, IG feed in the reels. And so when you click on that, you go to the community general one. It's not my stuff. I haven't posted any shorts yet, but I still need to utilize those shorts, which I'll try to do more community here is kind of something that I'm trying to I'm trying to utilize. And so you'll see that it's basically like a Facebook blog post, right? So post an update to your fans. You could post an image, image poll, text poll, quiz, video. And then you can post it. You can schedule it. You can archive, uh, archive it. Um, but so I posted this one four days ago. It was Christmas, um, and you know some of you guys read it. I put I put this up on my broadcast channel in Instagram. I'm going to try to utilize this functionality where we rally the community together even further. So my goal is to kind of make my webpage and you know things related to the Gecko Pod with me and AJ. I want to make things more of a community hub, some place a place that people can go to. Right. And so the Gecko Pod kind of accomplishes that um, to some degree, but I also want it want to further that. And so I'm going to try this uh, from my personal brand for Zero's Geckos. So what I said is I'm brainstorm brainstorming more ways to engage more breeders. I'm thinking along the lines of curating highlights of other breeders available animals on my website and this channel somehow. Not sure how yet, um, how it'll work yet, but 
I'm trying to figure that out. And so all that to say that this functionality here, if you go to my YouTube page, subscribe and you go to it, uh, anytime I post, I think you get a notification. I will try to figure out how to, maybe if like some breeders have some cool animals that I think are awesome that are for sale, you know, I'll reach out to you and be like, hey, can I feature this on my webpage? And um, I'll put it up and maybe do it like an auction style or something where, you know, um, we'll take a video or a picture of it, put it on YouTube, utilize its video functionalities, utilize this community section, put it up here, and then um, people can bid on it in the chats right here, right? I'm kind of brainstorming ways to utilize both my webpage and also the YouTube page. So it's all just kind of connected. Obviously, I'm going to link everything to the Gecko Pod as well. So we're all just kind of one big link up, link together that's really community community oriented, that it provides not just my animals for sale um, that are available, but also um, highlight and curate animals from you guys, from the community, and just make it more of like a fun thing where we can all kind of gather and check out each other's animals and buy each other's animals and things like that. So I'm not sure how it's going to work yet, but somewhere along those lines, I'll figure it out. I'm still working on my website. So yeah, that's kind of things I'm working on at the moment. This week is going to be a busy week as I prep for the show, the Pomona show. We're staying with Ralph at Cresty Spectrum together. He's going to help us vend, and he's also going to bring some of his own animals. And so check out his stuff. He has a bunch of cool caps. So he'll be with us. Um, I have my own table. I got my tablecloth. Um, I have a table runner coming with my logo from Alex. Alex, I'll try to post you up somehow. <laughs> I'll post you up a Pomona or something, and uh, I'll link up um, how Alex has been helping us out with with um, branding and whatnot and uh, website stuff. And so, so I'm excited for that. Um, I'll probably today or tomorrow, I'm going to try to start marking out animals that I'm going to bring to the show. Maybe I'll have a handful, of, a good amount of sub adults, some juveniles, a few smaller things, not super tiny, but, and then I'll probably have a few adults as well uh some males i'm not using all of them obviously females the females i i would like to use all of them but i don't have space i'm kind of considering building uh something in the backyard an insulated room uh, another insulated controlled room where i can have more hatchling and grow out space but uh, again, more expenses. I think I need to sell animals first before I can reinvest into this hobby and the things that I'm doing. But yeah, I would love more space, to be honest. I think that's the biggest problem we most of us have is that we just run out of space. So if I can utilize all my females, then I would have to double the space of my room here. So we'll see. We'll see how the first quarter goes in terms of sales and the show and um, how I'm able to make a little bit of income from the animals and reinvest back in. So we'll see how things go. I might do a preview sale as I kind of pack animals this week for the show to bring. Maybe I'll do a preview and post it up on my YouTube. If anybody wants it before the show, they can pick it up. You'll see that a lot of my stuff this year looks similar a lot of extremes a lot of high coverage a lot of creamy stuff but nonetheless i think um i think there are some decent animals that can be had i'm going to try to keep prices lower i don't know what that means to be honest but i do want things to be accessible and affordable for people and so you know high quality at prices that are decent that are fair but i also know that i'm a new breeder, a newish breeder that is just getting into the swing of selling teenly. And so I do want to keep prices lower to kind of, again, build that base, right? I'm kind of in that building the base mode, like I mentioned earlier. Like any business, you know, they kind of sell things for cheaper and then they kind of ramp up as they kind of grow and expand. And so it's like Netflix, right? Like any business model, you know, Netflix used to be 
was it $8.99 or $7.99 and then it went to $9.99 and then $12.99 and now it's I'm paying $22.99 for Netflix, you know, a, a few years later. And so it keeps increasing. And so we get mad at that, but actually that's a normal business practice for anything, right? Amazon, Amazon lost money for the first several years uh, before they started to recoup and uh, build out. And now they're um, one of the biggest companies in the world. So I kind of, I don't, again, I'm not sure all these things are going to work, but I just know in theory that they should work that as long as I'm kind of passionate about the animals and providing good content in the meantime, before I'm able to sell at a higher volume, I need to build the base first. And so for you new breeders, build the base. If, you, if you're looking at it from the long term, the long game, and maybe you're not gonna recoup some of your money until five years later, just build the base, like be patient, build your base community up, build, your relationships and your connections build your collection of nicer and nicer animals just be patient don't be too noisy uh i mean if you are noisy and that's your style that's fine but uh, just know that you're going to cause a lot of noise and people are going to look at your animals and be like oh okay <laughs> you know and so if you're going to make a lot of noise make sure you have a lot of firepower to back that up we've seen enough people make a lot of noise you know they're like two three months in and they don't have the animals um, necessary for people to uh, be impressed by and yet there's they're claiming all these things what they're going to do what their plans are and then they disappear for months and some don't even come back and so <laughs> the whole idea is to just do the work do the work of making good animals of building your community um of giving back to people of being a good person towards the community and towards others and be helpful two three years fly by your stock is going to be significantly better and you, people will know you better at that time you'll be able to hopefully sell some amazing animals and so that's kind of how i'm approaching things and hoping that you know things will pan out and do okay and do well you know so build the base build your base up find creative ways to build the base. And so I'll put out this vlog shortly. I feel like I have to edit this down quite a bit. And so it might take some time. Happy New Year to you guys. I still might put out another short video this week to kind of preview animals that I'm packing up for sale. And obviously, I'm going to be a lot more active. In um, I'll be active um, online because we'll be at Pomona. And so I'll try to engage with everybody and maybe go on some lives or uh yeah i think i'll try to go on some lives we'll see either on the gecko pod or here at um, my page stay tuned more things to come and again as always feel free to reach out to me say hi chat geckos and whatnot here um in the youtube comments or you can dm me in ig and we can chat there as well other than that like and subscribe i don't know do we do people still say that <laughs> subscribe if you like <laughs> if it's helpful to you subscribe um follow on ig follow the gecko pod all those good things you guys know where to find things all the links are in the channel and whatnot and so um i'll catch you guys soon on the next one and i'll show more geckos soon see you guys